After covering the 1999 Canadian Grand Prix on this series a little while ago, my friend Chris Whitfield reached out to me and said he wanted to make an episode on the 98 instalment with me. I thought, who better to cover the Canadian Grand Prix than a real life Canadian? So Chris, take it away. Good afternoon. On a warm and sunny day in the south shore of the St. Lawrence River, the stage was set for the 20th Canadian Grand Prix held on the circuit that bears the name of the first winner, Gilles Villeneuve. Following his victory on the streets of Monaco, Mika Hakkinen's McLaren led the championship standings by 17 points over his teammate David Coulthard. McLaren led the Constructors' Championship going away with a 36-point lead over Ferrari. To put that in perspective, back in 1998, you got only 10 points per race victory, so this was pretty much a black and silver wash of the standings. The grid looked like a McLaren benefit as they locked out the front row, followed by Michael Schumacher's Ferrari, and a rather impressive showing by Giancarlo Fisichella, continuing the Montreal momentum as he finished third in the Jordan the year prior. Iberville, Quebec's hometown hero Jacques Villeneuve, expected to rebound from his embarrassing 1997 lap two crash from sixth on the grid. When the race got underway, Ralph Schumacher stalled and was extremely lucky to be missed by everyone. Coulthard led with Hakkinen dropping back behind Schumacher, and whoa, Verts going for a flip. Herbert, Trilly, and Alacy, and of course, Verts are all off in the gravel. Wow, Verts is really pushing his audition tape for Cirque du Soleil, isn't he? The race was red flagged, and all the affected drivers made their way back to the pits to restart the race in their T cars. Yes, even Verts. Well, he wasn't going to be restarting in that thing, was he? When the race got underway for the second time, Coulthard once again led, but this time Hakkinen slowed and got gobbled up by the pack. Ralph locked up and got onto the grass, spinning back onto the circuit, and there was carnage behind, watch the two arrows as they tried to rejoin the track after cutting across the grass, and they forced Verts, Trilly, and Alacy to collide once again. Trilly ended up on top of Alacy, and this time the safety car was called rather than a second red flag. At the end of the first lap, Hakkinen, Takagi, and Ralph Schumacher all toured back to the pits and retired with mechanical issues, and Eddie Irvine was forced to pit with a badly delaminated rear tyre. This race has been absolute carnage, and we haven't even had a green flag lap yet. As we restart again, Coulthard leads and has a little lock-up into turn one. Schumacher is second, and then it's Fisichella, Villeneuve, and Frentzen. And hey look, they're all getting through turns one and two this time. That's handy. Also making a good start was Rubens Barrichello, great move! He started 13th and he's now up to 5th already past Frentzen. That's 8 places in one lap. Now to focus on the leaders. 3 tenths of a second is the gap, with Schumacher piling on the pressure. But look at Barrichello now, he's up to 4th, he's ahead of both Williamses now! And now he's not anymore. Oh Rubens. He'd almost caught Fisichella look, ah. Rubens' teammate almost got wiped out by Pedro Dinitz too. That was a close one. Oi! Now, now, Pedro, there's no need to tear up our grass. Have you seen the price of sod lately? There's turf all over the track now, look. Normally a green circuit means one that's fresh and not yet rubbered in, not one that's literally covered in grass. And there's the culprit, look. So I'm sure his uh, picks have already noticed that and they're telling him to come in the car. They're telling him to what? After a brief safety car intervention, the race restarted with the top five in the same order as before, but look at Villeneuve almost running into the back of Fisichella. Coulthard continued to lead, and the restart was somehow clean. Suddenly, Schumacher emerged in the lead, and it became clear that Coulthard was slowing. Both McLarens were now out of the race, putting home hero Jacques Villeneuve onto the podium. It was a throttle issue that did Coulthard in. Mika Salo wasn't having much luck either, ouch. Oh wow, and Johnny Herbert's off a little way down the road in a completely unrelated accident. What is going on? At least this fire marshal's getting lucky, getting Johnny Herbert's autograph. Safety car's out now, as you saw by the graphic on the screen. This allowed Schumacher to make his first pit stop, but as Michael rejoined the circuit, he crossed the blend line and took Paul Frentzen clean out of the race. For this, Schumacher was slapped with a 10 second time penalty, but Frentzen was going no further. 
After the pit stops, Fisichella led the race ahead of Villeneuve, Schumacher, Hill and Magnussen who was up from 20th on the grid. There were a few backmarkers in and amongst the leaders, which rather confused Chris when we watched this race together. Wait a minute. Diniz is third. Oh wait, he's a lap down. When the race restarted, Villeneuve got the jump on Fisichella and passed him into turn one, but he looked up and ran straight on. He then went into the grass on the other side of the track despite desperately trying to get his car stopped. With Schumacher still yet to serve his penalty, it was looking fantastic for Fisichella, who at this stage had never won a Grand Prix before. Now watches Esteban Tuero runs into the back of Jacques Villeneuve after misjudging the Canadian's trajectory. Tuero was forced to pit, but his teammate Shinji Nakano was now up to fifth from 18th on the grid. And if you were wondering if Villeneuve had any damage, wonder no more. His rear wing gave way and he was forced to stop. He would eventually return to the race, but six laps down and very much last. Here you see the battle for fourth, Magnussen holding off Panis, who appears to have passed Nakano for fifth, and then Wurtz is hot on their heels. It would honestly be amazing if Wurtz was able to score points despite having been upside down. Like Lawrence Van Tours McAlwin, but without the race being stopped early. Alright, now, I have to explain something about the penalty that Schumacher is taking here. Even though the incident with Frenson happened a little while ago now, and I made it sound like Michael was slapped with a penalty almost immediately, it actually took a little while for this penalty to be dished out in real time. This probably benefited Schumacher, because if it had been given out while the cars were still bunched up after the safety car, then he would have lost a lot more positions. With that being said, he didn't get off lightly here by any means. This isn't the kind of stop and go that you see nowadays, where a driver can wait for 10 seconds before a regularly scheduled pit stop. This is an old fashioned stop and go, where the driver has to come in for an extra pit stop just to serve the penalty. Damon Hill is now up to second place and Schumacher has a lot of ground to be gained. And here he is gaining some of it almost immediately. He's passing Hill up into second position, and the gap to Fisichella in first is 23 seconds. And there's Parnis off the road. The Prost driver had been having a really good race up until this point, briefly running third after Damon Hill had made a pit stop, although apparently his engine seized and forced him to spin, much like what happened to Checo Perez at the most recent Grand Prix as of this recording. The Benetton you saw going through there was Alex Wertz, who briefly took third place despite having been upside down earlier on, although he pitted and gave third place to Damon Hill, who immediately went and thanked him by breaking down. Now it was Barrichello P3. In the latter stages of the race, Fisichella and Schumacher both made their final pit stops, and after a slightly jerky getaway from Schumacher, it became time to see how much he'd brought the gap in by. As they exit the pits, wow, Schumacher is leading! Remember, he's had to overcome 23 seconds to the Benetton here, and in not that much time. How did he do it? Honestly, I have no idea. Maybe Fisichella had a mistake or two that we didn't see. Maybe he got caught up in traffic, or maybe Schumacher was just that fast. All we know is that Michael was somehow back in the lead of the race. Ross Braun, master of the undercut, hard at work to get Schumacher out in front of Fizzy. Here's an interesting scrap further back. This is Villeneuve getting a lap back on Magnussen, but they're not racing for position. But look at Nakano coming from behind because he is. Nakano so nearly passed the Stewart driver on the exit of the chicane, but had to defer for the time being. This is the fight for sixth and the final point. Finally, Michael Schumacher came out of the final corner to win by over 16 seconds, a gap which he'd built in only 25 laps. Second was Fisichella and third was Irvine, and the rest of the top six were Burtz, Barrichello and Magnussen, who scored his last ever point in F1 with sixth. Schumacher had lapped the majority of the field up to and including sixth place. Guys, before I give this race a score, I want to let you know that I have a Daily Motion account for all the races that get taken down from my YouTube channel by the pesky FOM bots. Due to the high levels of parody, review and education my videos contain, as well as the short lengths of the clips I use, I believe that all of my videos fall under fair use, but sadly this isn't always enough. On my Daily Motion account, you can find the 1996 Monaco and Portuguese Grand Prix, as well as any other video that may end up being taken down from my YouTube channel. The link is in the description. Thank you. 
I gave the Grand Prix a 7 out of 10 overall, mainly because the high rate of attrition made it unpredictable and chaotic. There seemed to be a real narrative to this race, which I always enjoy, and it actually influenced the championship somewhat, as this was the race where Schumacher finally took second in the standings from Coulthard and established himself as Hakkinen's main rival. I think the only thing really bringing the score down is how dominant Schumacher seemed to be after both of the McLarens retired, although his penalty prevented it from feeling like a win by default. Chris and I will both pick a Driver of the Day award for Best Driver, but I'll give mine to Shinji Nakano, who climbed all the way up from 18th on the grid to 7th, so nearly scoring a point in the woeful Minardi. I'll give my Inui trophy for worst driver to Mika Salo, who was largely to blame for the second start crash and then lost it all by himself later on. Well, for driver of the day, I'm going to pick Jan Magnussen, and only because he scored his only Grand Prix points for the Stewart team in what turned out to be his final race as he was let go for the French Grand Prix. As for the Inouye trophy, well... Gonna have to go with Alexander Wurtz for this one for, well, you all saw it. A dishonorable mention goes to Pedro Diniz for tearing up the city of Montreal's sod. Drive safely, guys, and I'll see you next time.